Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I'll tell you uh, about, give you a brief introduction, not the introduction, but status on the security of supply, uh, where we work uh, with the non-protected customer and uh, with a model for, for supplying the non-protected customer. And then I will tell you about the supply situation in this year. Yes. Um, regarding the non-protected customers, as you know, we changed our security plan last year, which allowed us to supply the non-protected customer during an uh, emergency situation. Uh, before, in the previous plan, we had to cut off the non-protected customer after three days of emergency. And of course, this uh, leads us to we need to have a model for uh, supplying, uh, for choosing which uh, non uh, which non-protected customers to supply, which non non con uh, non-protected uh, consumption to supply during an emergency. And we are working on such a model uh, based on input from uh, the non-protected customers. Um, <coughs> And we work with this model uh, uh, along with the Danish Energy Agency at the moment. Of course, this uh, this uh, topic have, uh, is uh, more interesting. Now we have had uh, this early warning in 2013, and also in the light of the situation in Ukraine and uh, Russia at the moment. Uh, so uh, this, this work has uh, high attention uh, in, in, uh, in our organization and in the Danish Energy Agency. And we hope to have a solution, uh, first step of a solution uh, could, will, will take effect in the 1st of October uh, this year. So this is uh, what I wanted to tell about the non-protected customers, I don't know if Anyone have questions regarding this? Okay, then the, the security of, uh, no, the supply situation this year, this spring. Uh, and I have compared it here to, uh, to the spring 2013 where we have two, had two early warnings uh, in the system. And I can say that when we looked at the inventory level uh, 1st of March, this year, we had 970 million kilowatt hours in the storage. The situation in uh, the 21 of March uh, last year was that we have had <coughs> 850 uh, million kilowatt hours in storage. So this is uh, somewhat uh, uh, more or less the, the same level. But then I can say everything is different because the system is much stronger. Um, in the situation we are in now, uh, we have the capacity on Elon is 300 and uh, 3.5 million kilowatt hours per hour, and in it is uh, more than 50 percent more than the capacity we had in 2013, and in 2013 this capacity was interruptible on the German side. Um, we also in, in uh, this is uh, uh, due to the new compressor station which we have, which can, uh, uh, which can uh, supply Denmark with a lower pressure from, from Germany. Um, also, as I mentioned before, now we are able to supply the non-protected customer even if we have an emergency situation, provided that we have enough gas to, uh, to uh, supply the protected customers at the same time. And then I can say that we have, uh, as you know, uh, Energinet has bought uh, the second storage uh, and this allows us to operate the storage facilities uh, in close cooperation and which make the security of supply from the the, the storage facility uh, better. So this give a, gives us a higher 
security of supply in an emergency situation from the storage facilities. <coughs> I just want to show you this. This is uh, the inventory level uh, during the spring here. And the 1st of March, we had this 80 million. I'm sorry, this is uh, cubic meters. This is because we are operational people. We cannot think in kilowatt hours. So this is uh, cubic meters. But here we had 80 million uh, cubic meters in the storage. As you can see, this, uh, this red line here is the TSO reservation for emergency purpose in the storage facilities. And here, the 1st of March, we have uh, a lower reservation in the storage facilities. And this gives us uh, the market have this, uh, uh, this, this, gas, this amount of gas to supply the, the customers. This uh, is uh, some sort of a stress test. This is the actual inventory level. And here we have uh, uh, made a calculation in the event that we have no supply from the North Sea. If we had a situation like we had in 2013, where uh, we had nine days without supply from the North Sea, then the picture would look like this. No supply from the North Sea. Entry level is maximum. We, uh, uh, we calculate that you would change the flow on entry element uh, from export to import from Ireland uh, to the maximum uh, capacity, 3.5 million kilowatt hours per hour. And if this happens, then we take the rest of the supply to Denmark and Sweden from the storage, and then the storage level would go like this. And you can see that we, uh, if this happened today, we would have one and a half months where we could uh, supply uh, the market in Denmark and Sweden uh, with gas from storage and from Germany. Yes? Just a curious question, what is the flow to Sweden in your calculations? Uh, the flow to Sweden is uh, the flow we have in a, in, a, in a normal flow. A normal so we say, flow. yes, we expect the temperature to be a normal year here. Yeah. So uh, this is our uh, calculation. And this, I think that this is uh, more than one and a half month that we can supply Denmark and Sweden without gas from the North Sea. And in, the, in the 2013, we have nine days which put pressure on us. So this is the situation, and of course we uh, follow this uh, closely. Okay, any question? Okay. Just a comment. The yeah. North Sea flow, that was in May, we had nine days. It was quite a, it was, it was a March, it was a very cold March, so also the, we say the available, the normal storage capacity on the commercial side very low storage yeah. due to the cold mass. You're right. Have you done that any kind of, uh, say it was a double, double tip last time. First you had a cold mass, mm. then you, I say the storage level was very low when you entered into May. Yeah, but the, you're, you're quite right. It was, uh, there was two situations. But it, uh, the first situation we had started in, in March, which left us with very uh, we had very low uh, inventory level in the storage, and then we have we looked in some coat to some coat days, and we could see that the the, the storage level, uh, the inventory level was dropping dramatically, and we could see that this would put pressure on the system. Then we had our first early warning, and uh, the customers injected gas into the storage, but not very much. And then we came in to this situation in last of April, where we had two early warnings. First, the storage facility um, had some problems with the withdrawal capacity. And next day, we re uh, received a uh, remit from, uh, from, from Mask 
saying that they had uh, to perform, um, uh, uh, they, they have to perform work on the platform, which uh, meant that they needed to cut off the flow for six days. And this was uh, uh, made to nine days later. So that was the situation. But uh, many things different here in, in this spring, I can say. Okay. Any more questions? And if you look out the window, there, there's, there's no snow. Yeah, I forgot that. <laughs>